What's up YouTube? Welcome to this week's tutorial on how to create the Okami Tsumi E type shader. Now for those of you unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, if you look in the video game Okami, which was originally on the PS2, but then was ported over to the Wii, which is actually when I played it, I only played it like, gosh, probably last year this time, I think I got it for my birthday last June. So um, yeah, and it was an amazing game, definitely go out and get it. It's uh, definitely worth your time. But if you look in the game, I was playing it over the weekend and was really baffled by how they did this. If you look at every single object, there's a black line around it. Now, it took me forever to figure out how to do this because no matter, you can't just paint a black line on something like this because no matter which direction you look at it, the black line will always be around the outer perimeter. So I'm like, okay, there's probably some way programming that they did this or they probably set up some complicated shader in uh, the Cry technologies or what engine was this made on? I have to search this up really quick, sorry. It's driving me crazy. Uh, Wikipedia. It's called like Cry, not Crytek. It's, um, oh, hey, that was actually what I wanted to look up. It was made by, Let's see, engines, engines. Okay, anyways, I can't figure out who it's made by. But anyways, uh, it's Cry something, Cryworks. Um, anyways. I didn't, you know, probably their custom-made engine allows them to do this. No. Quit asking me this. Okay, sorry about that. But again, I couldn't figure out how to do this, and it was really baffling me. But then I realized the solution was actually very, very, very simple. So first thing I'm going to do is just search rock texture. Um, same engine, or I'm using Bing, but the same results come up on Google. Um, I'm going to use this rock texture which um, looks pretty good looks like we can manipulate it into a Okami type texture so as you can see I already saved it here um, this will be in the project files that will be in the link so you'll be able to download that but what we're, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Photoshop now you could probably do this in GIMP but I really hate GIMP because it takes an hour to open even on my computer um, probably if you had an SSD it wouldn't have any problems but I do so I don't use GIMP I actually use Photoshop which is better um, despite what people say I'm all for free programs but Photoshop is actually better wait I already brought that in what am I doing um, anyways but so we're gonna apply some filters so just go to filter gallery and the first thing first filter is going to be Sumi E which is literally the type of shader we're going is the Sumi E art style so you're just gonna drop everything down to zero because that's what we really want. You know, you can turn stroke width up if you want to. You can stroke pressure. You can mess with this depending on what you're doing. Um, actually, I'm gonna bring up contrast just a little bit like that. Uh, it's like one or two. But I'm gonna hit OK. And I'm gonna go filter, filter gallery again. And then I'm going to go to artistic, smudge stick. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with this a little bit, drag the intensity a little bit down to about there, and that's good. So there's our texture. Um, just save this to your desktop or wherever you want. Uh, I'm going to do Okami text and save, quality up all the way, although I don't need it. Um, and I'm just going to exit this out. Now I'm going to open up Blender. This will work with any object. Um, if you wanted to create a rock, all you'd have to do is subdivide and then go. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Just go relax, relax, and then add a subdivision surface. This is why I did testing it and smooth it. But I'm going to do an object that's a little more complicated um, because you'll need to learn how to do it more complicated. I'm just going to add the default monkey, Suzanne. And I'm not even going to do a subdivision surface because in Okami everything's very jagged and you want it jagged because of the it has the effect. So smooth this out and hit Shift D and then just click. And we're going to name this new object Shell or actually Stroke because this is going to be our stroke. Now I'm recording, aren't I? Yeah, just wanted to make sure. Um, and then I'm going to go to Add Modifier shrink wrap 
Where is it? There we go. And then I'm going to select Suzanne, which is the name of the monkey. And hit grab X, or grab, and you'll see it's sticking, it's shrink wrapping. But the reason we're doing this is because we can actually set an offset. So if you go into wire mode, you can see there's no space in between the two meshes because it just looks like one mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to click keep above surface, and we're going to drag the offset up to about there. Um, because the width between the original mesh and the stroke mesh is going to be the width of our brush stroke. So if you want a really thick brush strokes, you can go like that. But I'm going to keep it about realistic to the game and go about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, something around there. But um, so you get this really kind of distorted uh, monkey here that looks really ugly, but we're really not going to be seeing this. So we're, what we're going to do is we're actually going to invert the surface normals. And for those of you who don't know what that is, also, quick tip, Windows 7, if you want to open up two of the same windows, hit shift and then click. Click the uh, thing and it should open up. But um, for some reason that's not working. It always works before. There we go. Yeah, shift click the Blender logo and it'll open up a new one. But I'm going to show you what surface normals are first. So first off, you have to go to Blender Render. It doesn't work with the thing. I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. But if you look at a plane, if you look at a flat plane in texture mode, Alt-Z, you can see it's only viewable from one direction. Girl, you know you're beautiful. No. Anyways, but, uh, yeah, so you can only see it because the surface normals, if we were to hit tab, or, yeah, tab, and then N, and go down to display normals, and then go to face normals, uh, and then turn, turn up the size a little bit, you can see that if we were to like extrude this and grab Z, just grab Y, the surface normal is pointing outwards away from the face. So that's the direction of the normals. And right now, if we go back to our project that we're working on, all the surface normals, if I were to view this in edit mode and then go N, normals, you can see all the surface normals are pointing out. We don't want that, actually. We want them to be pointing in. So with everything selected, just tap A and select everything. Hit reticulate to make sure they're all facing the same direction, and then hit flip direction. And now they're all pointing inwards. At least they should be. Reticulate flip direction. I was doing that once again to make sure. And now if you look in texture mode, that looks very strange. Well, first off, we're in cycles render, so we have to be in Blender. So we get this kind of weird effect. Um, you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this light and you can't see anything. So we're actually going to sec select our original object, not the shell, because we have to texture Susanna Monkey. So uh, go into edit mode, open your texture image. Now I'm going to do a full in-depth tutorial on texturing, uh, unwrapping. This isn't going to be anything really special. This, I'm just going to do the default U, Smart UV Project, OK. And then if you go into texture mode, you can see we have a pretty accurate Okami type texture. And you can see we kind of have a funny thing going on with this white mesh. Now, it looks very close to the brush stroke, but we have a few more things left to do. First, we're just going to name this, create a new material, name it brush. Now, if you're doing this in a game, Obviously, you're not going to add a new material, or actually, yeah, probably add a new material. Just black, uh, make it shadeless, just in case you did have a light or two. And now this will only work in the Blender game engine or real-time viewport, This will, or maybe even in Unity or something like that, but it will not work at all, ever, in the Blender render, because if we were to just render this, you're going to see Blender renders doesn't the norm, face normals don't affect the value at all. It only affects the real-time view. But um, as you can see, we have the effect pretty much down, and it's exactly how it is in the game, almost. Except one last feature, and it's very minor, but it adds that little polish to it. And what that is, is a displace modifier. Now, as you can see, this is horrible and ugly. So hit one or actually zero because we don't want to view that right now 
and we're gonna just do text because text is on the material already. Um, you could obviously create a new one. And now select text here over in the texture panel and we're gonna change this to clouds. And you can leave that default, it really doesn't matter. But now we are going to change the strength up. And now, as you can see, as we do this, we're kind of distorting a little bit. You don't want it up at all. You barely want it up a little bit just to warp the mesh a little bit. And you can even change the mid-level a little bit. Uh, but now remember, it doesn't matter if you clip. Um, if you clip the mesh, you probably won't even realize it. But if you look, we have a near perfect Okami shader. Not really a shader, I kind of let it false on the, um, I kind of lied to you with the shader thing because again, this isn't a shader, it's just a texturing trick, but I didn't know how else to word it in the title. So actually I might not, I'm second thought, I'm probably not going to uh, include the word shader in the title. But as you can see, if you just were to export this to UD, it would work, or uh, UDK, it would work. And this is, I did this on, let's see, what day is it? Monday? I'm recording this on Monday because I'm getting a bunch of new parts in. So for a new computer I'm building, so I'm probably gonna spend the weekend when I normally would record tutorials, um, putting that together and installing it and transferring stuff over. Um, Cause I'm moving from this machine and the workstation in the middle of my family room or living room or whatever you wanna call this, the dining room, to uh, my bedroom, my own personal computer, not shared with the family anymore, which is gonna be great. Uh, so, as always, the project files will be in the description. If you need any help with this, um, I'm always happy to help. And um, but yeah, so leave any rec recommendations for future tutorials in the comments, and I'll be sure to get to them. And as always, see you next week. Bring home the mother low barrier.